what's going on guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel and we are back again talking about lighting. This is going to be video number five in the lighting series. So if you have no idea anything about lighting, please, I made a whole entire playlist that gets you up to date on where we're at. We're going to be carrying off of the last video where we learned how to program in Chave Show Express right there, Chave Show Express. On the laptop, we learned how to program PARs in the last video. So we learned how to do this cool stuff right here. We learned how to do uh, this little fade sequence. We learned how to do strobes. We learned how to do a gig color. We learned all of this in the last video. So if you didn't see the last video, you might be a little bit confused watching this video. So please go check out that video again. I made a whole playlist in the description down below. I'll link the playlist below, but um, this is going to be video number five. We've so far covered what sort of lighting is out there, what sort of lighting we can utilize as mobile DJs, lighting 101 basically. We talked about in video number two how DMXing works, how to DMX lights, how it actually works, the logistics, the cabling, the setting up the fixtures, programming. That's in video number two. Video number three, we talked about wireless DMX, which is what I'm running right here, donor wireless DMX. We talked about how that works and what I utilize for wireless DMX. And then video number four, the last video right before that, we started on Chave Show Express learning how to program lights, specifically simple fixtures such as PARs, wash fixtures, stuff that is not complicated. That's all going to change today because we'll be talking about how to program these right here, movers. Specifically, I have ADJ Inner Spot Pros, but the same principles are going to apply to just about any moving fixture out there. We're going to dive into how you use generator and all that. So let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back to Chave Show Express as you guys can see on the screen right now. Just wanted to quickly get you up to speed on where we're at, at um, again, previous videos, but right now I have my InnoSpot Pro set up as channel 81 and channel 95. Those are the two InnoSpot Pros that we're gonna be using today. Again, that's covered in video number two on how DMX works, how we set them up, how you set the channels correctly. So they're fully set up. Go watch episode number two if you don't understand where we're at, but those are the two channels that I'm running. That's what I run my InnoSpot Pros on. So they are this fixture over here and this one over here. Those are the two we're going to be using today. Now also I need a refresh on the previous episode when we talked about how my programming works. It's based in layers. So if we look at the live screen real quick, this was for PARs. For PARs we have our colors and we have our strobes. Those are the first two layers of all of my programming for my fixtures. So I have independent control like I talked about in the last episode, independent control of my PARs, independent control of my uplights, independent control of my movers. I want them to be able to do different things at different times so that my lighting designer when he's sitting here programming and pushing buttons at the events can do a variety of combinations to make the lighting look very unique and do all sorts of stuff like that. So today specifically we're talking about movers. So for our movers like we talked about in the last episode we have some different layers to talk about. So first off like always we have our color layers and let me actually let me pull up what I do. So one little tip in Chavez Show Express, right now I have two pages showing. If you click this button right here and go to settings, you can go to this right here and you can change how many pages you got. You can do four, eight, etc. So I'm gonna click on eight real quick to show you guys and click apply and show you guys what it's gonna look like with a lot of pages. So let me pull up my pages that I have for my InnoSpot Pros and I'll get back to you in a sec. Actually, uh, I want four. I don't want eight. Four, give me four. All right, so now I have my four main panels that are used for the movers only. All four of these pages are used for my movers only. And I'm going to show you guys how we program this in a sec, but I'm just trying to get your mind around how my DMX programming logic works. So first off, we have color. That is all of these right here. You can kind of see them hitting me right now. Again, I will show you guys this in a second, but these are all of the color sequences. So these are all varieties of different colors. That's the first layer. Second layer, again, is strobes, which right over here on the right, under strobes, we have mover strobe only. It's just strobes, whatever color we're on, it strobes it. You can kind of see it behind me. Again, I'll show it in a second. Now, the third layer for our movers is our points and our movements. That's why we have a whole panel here of movements, and you can kind of see them bouncing around on me right now. We have different movements and I'm getting blinded right now. So along with the different movements, we don't always want them to move. So with movements, we also have points. So our third layer again is movements, 
slash points. And when I'm talking about points, I'm talking about reference points in your uh, event space. So for me, I have two of them. I have Inno above the dance floor. So if I want to highlight above the dance floor, I have that pre-programmed. And Inno center of dance floor, if I want to highlight the couple when they are doing their first dance, as I'm going to get blinded in like two seconds because I'm literally in the center. So that is layer number three. And layer number four with movers is our last layer. And this is kind of the, the specialty layer. For the most part, it depends on your moving head. Some have more than others. Uh, if you have like a wash mover, you pretty much only have zoom for the most part, most of the times. But with spot and beam movers, you normally have a prism and gobos. And that's what I'm talking about here in layer number four, prisms and gobos. And I have those built into the inno point page down here on the bottom left. Basically, W turn static. I don't know why I named it that, but this is a gobo overlay. And I will show you guys that. Actually, you can see it right here. So that is both a prism, because it broke it out into three different gobos and a gobo. You see me use this a lot at my events with the movers. Um, basically, I overlay that, and then I can change the different colors that it's doing with the colors. So that is my main, that's like one of my go-to ones. I also have uh, one for my DJ logo. I can't remember if these movers have my DJ logo. I don't think they do. I have two movers, if you guys remember back in the day. Uh, I have two movers that I put a DJ Rick Webb logo in. Um, these just have a square in them. So it depends on what two movers I grab. My two older ones have my DJ Rick Webb gobos in them. That is also a good point with spot movers. You can get custom gobos and put them into majority of your spot movers because they have interchangeable gobos. You can get a custom gobo with your couple's initials and you can put it in your mover and then you can put that uh, monogram, basically that gobo monogram, on a variety of different surfaces throughout your evening. There's a little pro tip for you guys. A lot of couples love to do the monogram on the dance floor. That monogram is pretty much pointless once open dancing starts because if I have a couple that really wants a monogram on the dance floor, I'll pitch them on using a mover like my InnoSpot Pro and we'll make a gobo to put in there. That way we can shine it on the dance floor during the opening initial portions, but then we can move that with the computer, basically with the thing, with using points, we can change the location, and then we can put that monogram slash gobo on a wall so that it's actually being utilized throughout the whole entire reception. Little bonus pro tip there. But, but recap, with movers, we have four different layers, colors, strobes, movement slash points, and then our prism slash gobos. So, Let's jump into the programming portion. All right, so to start off with our programming, we need to make our colors, which obviously right here, I already have a bunch of them made that do a variety of different things like you're seeing right now. But there is one very interesting thing with movers, at least the majority of movers, and that is that they have a color wheel instead of color mixing. So let's go to the editor real quick and I will show you guys what we're talking about. So again, a lot of this is gonna be recap from the previous video. So if you haven't watched the previous video on how this works, please go back to that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to create a scene, a little step scene with colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our two InnoSpot Pros here. So we got them both. So you press on one, you press control, to select the other and we have both of our inner spot pros. I want to link them, so um, I'm going to ungroup the fixtures so that way we can control them. I'm going to want to put our shutter up and I'm going to want to put our dimmer at full so that we can see our movers. Now, as you notice, when I raise the shutter and when I raise the dimmer, we have solid white. And like I was saying, the difference with these versus our pars is that they have a color wheel. So there is a physical wheel inside of the movers that churns to different colors. And you can see it right here. When I select color, this is the color wheel. So it's not at like a par fixture where you have a red, green, and a blue, and you can mix between them. You have a color wheel. So if I raise this up, you'll see there we have our different colors on the wheel. So this is, as we're going through the wheel, the wheel is turning and going to these different colors. Right here, you can kind of see this is the slow of a wheel where it kind of, you can stop at midway and you can see that the color wheel splits. And then you have like a crazy segment up at the bottom. And this color wheel is something we need to keep in mind with our programming because if two colors are on different ends of the color wheel, 
we got to make sure that the mover is off when it's switching between those colors otherwise we're going to see those colors in our programming so let me show you a quick example to understand what I'm talking about so right now we have red we have the fixtures group so that both of our InnoSpot Pros are red alright I'm gonna create a new step right here so I'm gonna click insert I'm gonna go to number two and now I'm gonna want this color to be green so we're gonna create a red green blue sequence so that one's green and with number three we want it to be blue and I believe blue is the next color on the color wheel alright there we go and obviously I'm just going up and down this little fader here uh, with different values to reach the different colors so this is going to be way too slow at five seconds so I'm going to adjust this total time to be five seconds in total so I'm going to go down here select five press enter recalculate our steps and uh, that's that's a little quick let's actually go with um, eight yes all right 2.65 so now when I press play this is going to illustrate the color wheel so that you guys can understand what I'm saying it's going to jump from red to green and when it does that it's going to show you the colors in between so if I click play and wait for it you see that right there that does not look clean so from blue to green it's clean but now from green to red you can see the colors in between as the wheel turns and that's something we don't want because that doesn't look clean see where you can see the orange and the yellow as it switches right there that doesn't look that good alright so now let me show you how we create that red green blue sequence to avoid having the color wheel show those intermediate colors the orange and yellow that we see in between the red and the green and then also all of the colors in between going from blue to red first thing we're gonna to want to do we're gonna do a simple one so we're gonna do again we want to change our dimmer from the fade the slope here to our hard cut because we're going for an instant change we're not going for a fade sequence we're going for an instant change so now we have that set and we're going to want to make the first color red all right now we're going to click insert and we're going to go to step number two now we're going to switch to green so we're on green now but this is going to be our intermediate step so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to shut our shutter completely off now on number three now that the color has switched we can bring our shutter back up so now we go to number four and number four is going to be another intermediate step so we're going to change it to blue so it's ready for the next change not purple blue and we're going to now shut our shutter off again and now we're going to insert again so number five now is set to turn our shutter back on and now we got one more step because the next step is to go back to red and we don't want it to do that so we need another intermediate step at number six so we need to have the color set on number six to red and we're gonna want to shut this off or shut um, not our dimmer we're gonna want to shut our shutter off so this is the idea First we have red, then we're going to want to switch the green so we got an intermediate step where they shut off and then they turn the green. And during that intermediate step the color wheel turns to green so that we don't see the turn from red to orange, yellow and then green. Then again we have an intermediate step before we change to blue and then six we have our intermediate step before we turn to red. Again, total time pretty long, so we're going to adjust this down to 12 seconds, and we're going to recalculate, and now I'm going to click play, and you guys are going to see all of the changes. So red to black to green to black, and then to blue, and then back to black, and then back to red on step number one. And that right there is how you do this sequence. All right, so just like in the last episode with PARS, we're gonna save our scene, and we're gonna save this scene as uh, RGB YouTube uh, Mover. That's what we're gonna save it as. All right, cool. So now if we go to our live window now, we can go to our live window, and we're gonna go and create a new page again, add new page, and we're gonna call this uh, YouTube color movers okay 
So now we have our scene up here. We're going to go to add pop-up add scene and we're going to now find our YouTube color mover RGB. We're going to click open and there we go. So now if I shut off the editor, again you want to unactivate the DMX on the editor so that way the live is showing. <laughs> we can now click on it and we have our scene. Red, black, green. And just like the last episode, we can right click this and we can go to our speed properties and we can go to manual BPM. Obviously we have auto as well, but I prefer manual. We click apply and now we can go over to our right hand side here and we can tap to the BPM. So let's say I want to do a 119. There we go. We are at a 119 pace on this. If I want to speed it up and go the 289. We can do that as well if we want to slow it down a lot and go to 17 or uh, 78. We can do that as well and slow down that sequence so that it's synced directly to the music. And then obviously we can also change the button color just like we did in the last episode. We can make this one dark green for red, green, blue. There you go. That is how we create a color sequence for our movers. Very similar to what we did in the last episode with our power colors. Um, but that we have to consider the color wheel when we're doing movers. Now, one thing you can do though is if the colors are very close to each other, you can just make them turn from one to the next. So let me show you how you do that real quick um, as well. So we're going to activate our DMX here. We're going to add a new scene. We're going to bring our fader and bring our shutter up. We're going to make the hard cut. Now, let's look through our color wheel real quick. So we have red orange yellow so you could make a sequence that goes red orange yellow I'm not really a fan of hot colors um, so I prefer to do this sequence right here I like to do this one the blue to the pink magenta purple color to our teal those that's kind of my favorite combination right there so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a sequence that does this so the first color I want is blue now we're going to add a second one, go to our second one, and I'm going to make it go to a magenta pink color, and then we're going to go to number three, and we're going to make it do a light teal. Now with movers and with that color wheel, we cannot stop at step number three and just let it go back to blue on step number one, because if we do that, we're going to see that pink in between. You see that? So if we see that, there's going to be a jump. So what we need to do now is add a step number four and bring that color wheel back to pink so that way when it switches to blue it's seamless so there you guys can see that as it cycles through all the colors it's just going back and forth between all of the different colors so now I'm gonna save this scene now and I'm gonna save it as a um, we'll call this a blue pink and teal I kinda like to abbreviate the colors for my reference uh, YouTube movers and then we go to live again and we'll add this in here and we'll add our pop-up scene and we'll go to find it right here where's that blue purple teal YouTube mover open and there we go we have our other color again we have to go to the editor and deactivate DMX so that way we can control it there you go we have our red green blue sequence oh whoops we forgot one step and that is to do our solo buttons. So we go to the page, we activate solo buttons. That way, whenever we click one button, it deactivates the other one. Very important that you activate solo buttons on all of your pages. Also, we want to go to this. We want to go to our speed properties. And we want to go to manual BPM as always. And there we go. Now we are synced with our BPM. So if we're bouncing around 142 BPM, it's changing back and forth. Now, as you guys can see, it's a nice, clean sequence change. Again, nothing complicated. This is very similar to what we did in the previous episode when we programmed our PARs. So now let's get to something new, and that is programming our movement, our movements, and our point sequences. So to start, I'm actually going to create a quick little scene real quick. I'm going to create a white, so that way I have a white spot to work with. So I'm going to jump through this and do this really, really quick. So there's white. I'm going to click uh, save as, and then I'm going to go white YouTube. All right, 
I quickly went in and made a white so that way we have a white to do our points with again very similar to the previous episode if you want a solid color you just create a solid color button um, we do the same thing with our pars over here like we have UV we have white and then we have our gig color similar over here you can create a gig color for your movers um, so now we have three different color combinations um, and we have our white. I did forget one step and that is layer number two that is strobes um, It's very similar to what we did with pars Let me just go in and we'll edit our mover strobe overlay and I'll show you guys how you do that Basically you set up the shutter only like you're seeing here 109 is what works for this so if I activate it real quick you guys can see it's strobing um, again, we want to just activate the shutter only we don't want it to affect the master dimmer or any of the other uh, positions or anything like that so all the other channels are deactivated our shutter is changed to 109 because we want our shutter to change the strobe and then when we deactivate it it changes off strobe so right here in the bottom right I already have a mover strobe overlay made again very similar to what we did with par strobe overlays you can see right there um, they're just strobe overlays and all they do is change the shutter so that our uh, fixture of choice is strobing whether it is our mover or our par so now let's get to the juicy stuff and that is points and that is our movements so I'm gonna start with something simple and that is points and for that we're gonna be using the steps for our movements though we're gonna be using generators so let's start off with our points basically right now we want to create a point spot so what I want to do is I want to create a point that's gonna hit right in front of you guys so as you guys can see, the right mover is pointing directly where we want it to point. We want it to point right here. The left mover is not, and that's because we have our movers linked. So we're going to ungroup our movers real quick. So we'll click the ungroup, and we will select this mover right here. And we should now be able to move just our right mover, and we can move it into position. We want to go a little bit lower so you guys aren't as blinded. And there we go. We now have both of our movers pointing directly at the camera right here so now we can save this as say center of the dance floor so we're going to save scene as and we're going to save it now as a point and we're going to do youtube center dance floor save now if i remove this and we go to our live window real quick we can now create a new page down here we're going to add a new page and we're going to call it youtube points and actually i'm going to call this youtube points slash uh, prism dash gobos because we're going to create more than just points in this window um, because points there's normally only a couple points that you actually need so we're going to add pop-up ad scene again and we're going to find youtube youtube center dance floor and now we have a point so the movers are going to move around and there we go we're at that point now as you guys saw that was pretty slow so what we want to do is we want to go to edit and we want to change these to instant values because that is going to make it not fade and it's going to go a lot more instant it's going to try and get there very snappy so I just changed our values down here to be snappy instead of fading and I clicked save and now we can go back to live deactivate our YouTube center dance floor I'm back to center and then if I click it again they move a lot quicker you can do multiple points and you can edit them very simply at your gigs because you're not always in the same position you are with every dance floor and hitting your bride and groom is not the same with every event you do so to do that you would just right click this go to edit and then you can go in and you can adjust each of your movers independently uh, make sure you activate your DMX and then you can move your movers around wherever they need to be and then you can select your other one and you can move that one around to wherever you need it to be as well again here with this pan and tilt window and just being able to click and drag your movers around to different areas and being able to see them at a gig is very simple to create a lot of different points again I don't really use a lot of them as you guys can see on my main window here I only have two that I use one is center of the dance floor and one is above the dance floor so points are very simple but let's talk about movements because everyone loves movements so I'm gonna deactivate my point we're gonna go to editor we're gonna activate our DMX 
and we're gonna go to our generator so I'm gonna click new scene I'm gonna click no we're gonna go to our generator so the generator is where you basically can make a lot of complicated movements and stuff very simply so I'm gonna click on both of my InnoSpot Pros and I'm going to activate in the generator the X pan and tilt channels so if I activate our X pan and tilt over here and I activate our DMX so that we can watch it and I press play you will see the movers will move around to all of these different points so this is our giant pan tilt window that we had on our steps right here except now with the generator it is going from step to step so from step one to step two to step three to step four and I'm gonna click stop real quick and you can click and you can drag these points whatever way you would like and you can add a point too and you can add another point here so if you want to do something funky like this you can and you can press play and you can watch exactly what it does and you can play around with this and do all kinds of crazy stuff let me just kind of walk you through a lot of the stuff so obviously you can create points you can move them around you can add them to different areas very simply like that but you have more features than that at the bottom here this is kind of your programming window so right now we are set to curves so right now it follows a curve from these position points from one to the next you can also do lines so that it creates more of a linear path less curving so if I play it now it's more straight paths less curves more straight up down left right just a different variety you can also do points points it just waits and then goes to the next point so if I click play on this it's gonna wait and go to the next point wait go to the next point wait go to the next point so you have different varieties of types of movement generation you can do with the different varieties here between points lines and curves you can also set the time period for the total movement so if I wanted to make it a lot quicker say five seconds and we have it set the points we'll do play and it will go very quick very quick in between both of them likewise you can set this very long and I can press play and it will take forever to go to the next one now you might be looking at this thinking that I'm creating these is going to take you a while and there are pre-made paths that you can import so if you click the little options key down here you can load a curve and if you click on that there's a lot of curves that you've already created as well as a bunch of curves that come with the program itself so there's an up down there's a wash circle there's a star there's all these different ones that come preloaded as well I'm gonna load in this up down let's see what that does so right here we have from one to two to three and we are set up to do a line let's see what that does real quick so we're going up down up and down so that's kind of cool but it's doing it to the left I want it to do up down up down to our crowd so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this I think if I move it over here that's where it will be nope I need to go the other way so I need it to be right there and then I'm gonna move one to be right below it and a lot of these programs guys what you're doing is you're you set up your movers and you kind of just play with them and see what you want them to do so that's kind of offset to the right I need to go back to the left a little bit so there we go I played with it I was able to get it so that our movers now go straight up and down right in front hitting our crowd and not hitting anything behind it I want to add some variety to this I want it to go to the left so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little point over here to the left and I'm gonna make this one go over to the right so let's see what this does now there we go now we got some variety going on alright so I added a point and then I moved it to the left and the right here and I made this kind of cool combination and that's kind of cool I like that so I'm gonna stop and this is gonna be the movement we're gonna use for this demonstration so I'm gonna save this as and I'm gonna save this as a movement and we're gonna save this as a uh, YouTube now we can go to live and we're gonna create another page again and we're gonna call this our YouTube 
movements. And then we're gonna go here, we're gonna add pop-up ad scene again. And uh, for pop-up ad scenes, it's in a different folder, it's in the generator folder. So we're gonna click on YouTube movement, open. And now if we go to our editor and deactivate that, and we go to our steps, deactivate that. Now we should be able to see our movement. So right here is that movement that I just made. Kinda cool, pretty hot looks neat but there's even more variety you can do inside of the generator like I said there's endless possibilities with this alright so in generator we have some more things we can do with our lights so the first one I want to show you is being able to invert your fixtures so right now the left and the right mover are pointing in the same direction throughout the sequence so right here I pause, play, pause. Both movers are pointing to the left. If we want to make it so that they kind of mirror each other here, so that they both kind of shoot uh, left and right opposite of each other, what we can do is we can go into our pan and tilt menu here, and what we're going to do is we're going to right click it, and we're going to go to reverse pan and tilt. And now you can reverse the pan and tilt on the different movers that you have. So for me, in a spot two, I want to reverse the pan and tilt on it, okay? So there we go. Now if I click play, you see the adjustment? Right now, they are mirroring each other. So that when this one shines to the right, this one shines to the left. Instead of them both shining to the right, now mover number two is mirroring mover number one and shining in the opposite direction. Pretty cool, awesome little cheat that you can do with your movers. So now we have mirroring movers. So this makes the that whole entire sequence we just did look completely different, the way that they are mirroring each other. Very cool, very cool. Now, there's even more that you can do to create different movements with the generator. There is at the bottom here a shift. And what this will do is it will delay one mover to the next. So if I click play real quick, and I'm going to show you guys in real time what this does. Actually, what I need to do is actually up our duration a little bit, because right now it's moving a little too quick for me. So I just doubled the movement speed. So right now, both movers are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. So if I take this shift and I rotate it to the left, now as you can kind of see on the screen, one is leading two, and two is off by 18.9%. So they're kind of catching up to each other and we can kind of speed that up a little bit so that they're kind of right on top of each other, just a little bit behind it so that you can kind of see that one just barely comes down before two. Right here you can kind of see one will come down and then two will come down right after it. So there's a little bit of a delay and that allows you to do a variety of different things as well. And for the most part down here, this shift parameter, it's a cool feature, especially with your movers. But when you only have two movers for the most part, I wouldn't utilize it that much. Where I would utilize this shift function for the most part is if I did an array of like say six or eight movers and I wanted the movers to do like a curl. So maybe like this right here, if I change this to a curve and they do kind of like a curl and then they come down like this. If you can imagine with that shift parameter, if I had eight of these going across, you would see them go like one will come down, two will go down, three will down, four, five, and six down. It would kind of be like a kick line. So that this one would kick down, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. So it's cooler to use the shift parameter if you have a lot of movers. That's when the shift parameter for me really looks cool when it comes to making different movements. So as you guys can pretty much see here, when creating movements in Generator, you can create endless combinations. It is, it is actually like, it's basically freedom to do whatever you would like. And I kind of want to show you guys all of my movements real quick. So if I go up here to the top and I go to my Inno movements, I have created eight different ones here just to give you guys some ideas of what you can do. I have a side to side one here where the movers just swing side to side and they go up back and forth and then right beside it we have the same side to side but now we have a little bit of a delay between the left to the right mover so that one of them kind of kicks up a little bit higher before the next one so we have a little bit of a delay 
I have a circle one. So this kind of creates a circle around the room. The movers just kind of circle around. We have a cross rotation, one of my personal favorites. I love this one. Kind of like a cross with a rotational aspect to it. And as you guys can see here, I have these ones right here that are kind of all blue. And the reason why these ones are blue is because these are my upbeat movements. As you guys can tell, these move at a pretty decent pace. Definitely something I would combine with something like our color combinations for upbeat music. Definitely look cool when you add this with upbeat music. Now, for stuff like slow dances, I have these ones in yellow. And these are slow rotations, so I've upped the duration so that they move very slowly. And I only have two of them. One is just a slow rotation left to right, just scans across the crowd left to right. And the other one is kind of a slow rotational um, offset so that they're kind of just like slowly rotating around the room, kind of like searchlights, kind of like spotlights. Really like that combination as well. But again, I could sit here and I could create tons of different generations of movements in the generator. There are endless possibilities. The generator is very powerful. And if you guys need any help with that, um, I pretty much already created one there for you so you have an idea of how it works. I hope that helps. Um, but that is movements inside of generator. So right there is our movement that we just created. Again, you guys can play around with it and you can create tons of different movement combinations. All right, we have now covered all three of the main layers of our movers. We have our colors, we have our strobes, we have our movements and our points, and we're down to the fourth layer, which is prisms and gobos. So these are gonna be very quick, very similar to what we did with our strobe overlay right here where we have a mover strobe overlay. We're gonna create prism and gobo overlays. All right, so to create our prisms and to create our gobos, we're gonna go back into our editor and we're gonna go to steps, create new, make sure our DMX is activated. Now in the live window, I left the white on so that way we can see what we are doing with our prisms and with our gobos. And to kind of break you guys down here at the bottom, because um, I haven't gone over it before, but if you hover over these, they tell you what they are. This is your X pan channel. So this will pan the fixture left to right. This is your main adjustment, and this is your micro adjustment. That's why it's called U pan. So you can adjust this one. It'll move it very quickly. And then this one beside it is your fine adjustment. So it just barely moves it for fine adjustment left and right. Not a lot of people use that, but we want to disable those. So we're going to right click, we're going to disable channel, and we're going to right click and we're going to disable channel. X, these are our pans left to right. Y, these are our pans up and down. Again, our macro and our micro adjustment. Next, we have the color wheel. We've done that one before. And then after it, we have our gobo wheel, our gobo rotation, our prism, our prism rotation, our focus, these are all channels that we have not touched yet, all five of these. And then we have our shutter. We messed with that one before. That's how we do our strobes and our master dimmer. After this, these are effects, speed, and control. These two channels are channels that you probably will never, ever touch. For our prisms and for our gobos, let's start off with the prism. The prism channel here is very simple. It's either on or off. So right now it's off. Right now it's on. And I want to group my fixtures real quick. And you guys probably can't see that, so let me turn on the hazer real quick. All right, so now we have some haze so you guys can see. This is with our prism off, and this is with our prism on. So with the InnoSpot Pros, we have a triple prism. So it splits the one beam into three beams. Other fixtures, some of them have a five split prism, some of them have a nine, some of them have two prisms so they have five and nine so that they can do really crazy stuff some of them have three and nine different combinations you get the point prisms allow us to split the beam up into multiple beams so we get kind of like a wider coverage we also have our prism rotate so as you can see we can rotate that prism and we can adjust the speed of the rotation and we can slow it down too as well with the fader right next to the prism so if i wanted to create a overlay that has a prism rotation like this, I can do that. 
So that is exactly what I'm going to do, and I want a kind of a slow rotation. So I want something like that. So I'm going to save this now as a um, YouTube, and I'm going to call it Prism Overlay. So now let's go back to our live window real quick. And again, we're going to do it down here in the YouTube Point Prism Combos. And we're going to go in, we're going to add a pop-up scene, and we're going to add our YouTube Prism Overlay. So now, if I click on this, we have a Prism Overlay with a rotation. And again, this works for colors too. You click on the button and it does a Prism Overlay of whatever color it is. And you guys can kind of see the value in using Haze at your events it increases those beams dramatically. So now we're not just done. We also want to create some gobo overlays. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our editor, we're gonna create a new scene now, and we're gonna mess around with our gobos. And we're also gonna add in our focus because we wanna make sure that the gobo is in focus. So we're gonna go to our gobo wheel and we're gonna start to increase that value. Okay. So we just went to the next gobo and I don't see a change and I know for a fact there is a gobo there you can kind of see it but there's no gobo there and that is because it is out of focus so what I'm gonna want to do is go over to our focus here and I'm gonna want to play around with our focus as you guys can see until we get a nice clean and it looks like I need the focus wheel all the way up to get a precision focus so that we can see that gobo so again you got to use the focus as well as the gobo to utilize your gobo so for me I had to up my focus from zero all the way to a hundred so 255 that's a hundred percent to be able to see my gobo so there is gobo number one if we keep going up the spectrum go to gobo number two this one's a rectangle pretty lame then we also have this sort of pattern I kind of will just show you over here what the gobos are I'll keep raising up this is our another one we can go to this one this is a glass gobo so it's got some color to it we have another glass gobo now we have shaking gobos so this is kind of like where it just shakes all the different gobos you got and it's not actually shaking the mover the mover is not shaking this is actually within the the wheel itself it is shaking the gobo wheel back and forth so there's all your different shaking ones again with movers we have more combinations than what we probably will ever utilize i normally with my movers only use this gobo right here again super clean um, this gobo looks really sick in the haze itself, as you can see. So I'm going to click and I'm going to save. So I want the focus up. I want my gobo up. Oh, I forgot. We can rotate this gobo too. So the next fader to the right here, this is how we rotate it. And the first little bit um, from 0 to probably like 30 or 40 here is just to be able to rotate that gobo. So say you have a bride and groom gobo with their names you want to be able to rotate it so that their names are straight so you have the ability to do that in show express with the gobo rotate option right here but i want to get to the point where they're spinning which i think is looks to be maybe in the 70s all right so it looks like at 128 this is when the rotate starts and as you guys can see it is spinning absolutely ridiculously fast so we want to slow that down significantly so we're going to raise that up raise that up raise it up until we get a nice way slower rotation that looks cool right there that's the speed we're going to go at it's actually kind of quick but i think it looks kind of cool and again with the gobos for the most part i'm looking for the aerial effects with mine because these gobos like this one right here i'm not using for atmospheric effects Again, sometimes you can use them for atmospheric effects, but for the most part, I'm using them for the aerial effects, so that's what we're doing right now. Um, I'll pop up a picture real quick of a conference I did uh, where I used this gobo right here. Let me find it. I used uh, this gobo right here in all of my eight InnoSpot Pros we were using to create a really cool design on the ceiling. I will show that that picture is what you guys are looking at right now. But again, I want to utilize... Uh, well, actually, we'll use that we use that one and I want to go back up to about one, 179 so there we go we have a cool kind of like barrel tunnel rotation with that so 
I'm gonna click save as, and I'm gonna save this as a gobo. So YouTube gobo. And now again, we're gonna go back to live. We're gonna go in, we're gonna add our pop-up ad scene. We're gonna go in, we're gonna find the YouTube gobo. So again, with our layers, now we have the prism overlay, and then we can also add in the gobo overlay. So now we have all kinds of combinations we can add. We can like just have the gobo overlay so it just looks clean like that right there. We can add in the prism and make it do a variety of gobos across the room. We can add in some colors so that we have all kinds of cool gobo effects going on around the room. We can add in movements so that the movers are moving around the room doing all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Um, again, colors, you get it. We have, we can strobe it. We can do all sorts of combinations and it's just endless possibilities of what we can do with all of our different layers to do crazy light shows. And we have our center of the dance floor as well to blind you guys out. All right guys, that was a very, very lengthy video. I tried to cover movers as detailed and as concise as I possibly could. As you guys can tell, with moving fixtures, you get a lot, especially with spots and especially with beams. When you add in prisms, gobos, there are a lot, a lot of different combinations and a lot of programming that you can do with your movers to create some very, very unique stuff. A lot more crazy than what I even do in my programming. But on that note, I hope this video was as concise and easy to follow as I intended it to. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Also, hit me up on Instagram. I am My DMs are always open for any questions. Ask me any questions. I will give you an answer um, as best as I possibly can. This video kind of was the final conclusion of this lighting series. I hope this kind of really showcases why I use Show Express because of the power um, of how powerful it really is to program your lights. You can literally make your lights do exactly what you want them to do. And if you break them up the way I do by fixture type, you have literally millions of different combinations that you can do at your events. One additional thing that I love about doing it by fixture is that way I never have to program my lights again unless I need to tweak them for things like gig colors and for spots on the dance floor. Those are the only things I really need to adjust on the fly at my events. For the most part though, all of my light programs are the same light programs I've been using for the last three to four years since I started DMXing. But anyways, that's all for this video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video. If this video was helpful for you and you think it could help other people, feel free to share it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever. Share it all you want. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you see all the new awesome videos. I think I'm going to be diving a lot more into audio related topics next now that we've covered a lot with lighting. Also, if you have any other ideas for lighting videos, uh, more in-depth DMX videos, please let me know in the comment section down below. I can uh, put them on my list to do. But anyways guys, that is all. My name is Diedrich Webb. As always, keep the record spinning and I will see you guys next time with an awesome, amazing tutorial video of some sort you know I'm filming this video literally like three o'clock at night so I'm tired peace